In this video, we're going to focus on finding the acceleration of a particle given the velocity time graph. Now, before we do that, let's talk about some things that you need to know. Whenever the velocity is increasing, the acceleration is positive. Whenever the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero. And when the velocity is decreasing, the acceleration is negative. So with this information, we can determine the intervals when the acceleration is positive, when it's zero, and when it's negative. So here, the velocity is increasing, which means that the acceleration is going to be positive during this part of the graph. Here it's constant, so the acceleration is zero. Over here it's negative, so I mean, the velocity is decreasing, so the acceleration is negative. Here, it's zero. But here, the velocity is increasing. So acceleration is going to be positive. But notice that the velocity is increasing at an increasing rate. In other words, notice that we have a concave up curve. So not only is the acceleration positive, but the acceleration is increasing. Here, the velocity is increasing at a constant rate. So the acceleration is positive, but it's constant. Acceleration is not increasing. Here, the velocity is decreasing at a constant rate. So the acceleration is negative, but the acceleration is constant. It's not decreasing at an accelerating rate. But here, because the velocity is increasing at an accelerating rate, the acceleration is not only positive, but it's increasing as well due to that concave up shape. Now, how can we determine the acceleration of the particle during the first five seconds? We have the velocity on the y-axis in meters per second, and we have the time on the x-axis in seconds. So how can we determine the value of the acceleration during this segment of the graph? What we can determine is what is known as the average acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So it's going to be the change in velocity divided by the change in time, which is equivalent of saying the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time interval. In other words, the acceleration of a velocity time graph is going to be equal to the slope of the curve. The slope represents the rate of change. So if we were to use these two points, which I'm going to highlight in blue, we can calculate the average acceleration of the particle during the first five seconds. Now, because it's a straight line, the average acceleration will be equal to the instantaneous acceleration as well. When we have a curve, we can approximate the instantaneous acceleration with the average acceleration. So it's good to know the difference between the two. So at t equals 5 seconds, velocity is going to be 40. And at t equals 0, the velocity is 20. So 40 minus 20 is 20. And we're going to divide that by 5. So we have a change in velocity of 20 meters per second, which occurs in 5 seconds. So that's going to give us an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. So that's how we can calculate the acceleration during the first five seconds of this velocity time graph. Now we already know what the acceleration is during the next 10 seconds. It's going to be zero because the velocity is not changing. If you were to 
plug in v final minus v initial, it's going to be 40 minus 40, which will give you 0. Now, what is the acceleration during the next 5 seconds, during this segment of the graph? How can we determine that? So we're going to use the same formula as we did before. Notice how similar that equation is to the slope of a line, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we can see why the acceleration is really the slope of the velocity time graph. And this really is the main theme of this lesson here. This is how you find the acceleration of a VT graph, basically by finding the slope of the line. In other words, finding rise over run. Now let's focus on these two points. So v final is going to have a value of 10. v initial is going to have a value of 40. And here, the time is 20 seconds. Here, the time is 15 seconds. 10 minus 40 is a change in velocity of negative 30 meters per second. And the change in time is going to be 5 seconds. So that's acceleration. It's the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Acceleration tells you how fast the velocity is changing with respect to time. Negative 30 divided by 5 is negative 6. So we have an acceleration of negative 6 meters per second squared. That's how you can calculate the acceleration of a VT graph for the straight line segments. Now, what about finding the acceleration of this point? Because we don't have a straight line. In this case, the way we would do that is by finding the slope of the tangent line. The tangent line is a line that touches the curve at one point. To calculate the slope of that line, you need to find the derivative of the function. So if we knew the velocity function, we could find the instantaneous acceleration by taking the derivative of the velocity function and plugging in the value of t. That will give us the instantaneous acceleration, the acceleration at exactly 30 seconds. But since we don't have velocity function, we can't really use that method. We can't really find the derivative. What we can do is we can approximate the slope of the tangent line with the slope of the secant line. So let's say if we focus on this point, And this point here. The secant line is a line that touches the curve at two points. So those two lines are almost parallel. And we know that parallel lines have the same slope. So we can approximate the slope of the tangent line which I'll call the code as t, with the slope of the secant line. Because in order to use this formula, we need two points. In order to find the slope of a line, you need at least two points. So this formula will help us to calculate the slope of the secant line. The slope of the secant line will give you the average rate of change, in this case, the average acceleration. The slope of the tangent line will give you the instantaneous rate of change, in this case, the instantaneous acceleration. What we're trying to do is we're trying to use the average acceleration to approximate the instantaneous acceleration.
and that will help us to approximate the slope of the curve at this point, which will give us an estimation of the instantaneous acceleration. All right, I know I did a lot of talking, so let's go ahead and plug in some points. At this point here, the y value appears to be about 10. For this point, we could say it's about 25. I know my graph is not perfect, but we'll make the best of it. The t value at this point seems to be 25. And for this point, the closest value there would be about 33. So v final is 25 minus v initial, which is 10. t final is 33 minus t initial, which is 25. So we have a change in velocity of 15 meters per second divided by a change in time of 8 seconds. So 15 divided by 8. I am going to use my calculator for that. So that will give us an average acceleration of 1.875 meters per second squared. So we could say that the instantaneous acceleration is approximately, we don't have an exact value for this, but we could say approximately 1.9 meters per second squared. Or if we want a safer value, we could say approximately 2 meters per second squared. So that's how you can approximate the instantaneous acceleration at a point by using the average acceleration formula. By the way, these two points here, the closer they are to the point of interest, the more accurate the estimation will be. So that's it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the acceleration of a velocity time graph. So remember, the acceleration is the slope of the velocity time graph. By the way, for those of you who want more example problems on velocity time graphs, acceleration time graphs, and even position time graphs, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more video content relating to this material. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.